right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Cleaning up after the storms. Severe weather hits the bi-state. Tonight we have damage reports coming in from both sides of the river from a popular wedding venue in Jefferson County. We had babies inside, we had a lady in a wheelchair, got everybody to safety. To homes damaged in the Metro East and power lines down across the region. Tonight, the threat of severe weather is over. All watches and warnings have lapsed. Good evening. I'm Mike Bush. I'm Kelly Jackson. Crews are working to restore power to thousands of customers. We have live team coverage tonight of the storm damage from across the St. Louis region. Let's start with Brent Solomon, who is live at Brookdale Farms in Jefferson County, where a wedding rehearsal dinner was cut short tonight, Brent. You know, talk about some startling moments for those nearly two dozen people who were inside for that wedding rehearsal. They quickly found themselves ducking for cover. Everybody kind of quickly rushed into the bathroom and we kind of waited it out there. Annette Johnson is planning the wedding for a local bride. They were inside of this event space at Brookdale Farms when the storms rolled through. Trying to get everyone lined up and then all of a sudden the wind started, got a little dark. Chairs started blowing outside. Moments before, part of the roof ripped to the ground. We had babies inside. We had a lady in a wheelchair, got everybody to safety and uh, before the roof, part of the roof came off. The company's storage unit next door now destroyed. Just extra farm equipment, uh, stuff for our fall festival. It's a large storage building and just a little bit of everything is stored in that building. Authorities shut down a portion of Twin Rivers Road. Look at this transformer that fell into the roadway. A lot of people like to come outside and say, hey, let me see what's going on. But especially on this roadway, you can't even get through. That's correct. Uh, please avoid the area. We still have live, possibly live power lines down, and we would hate for somebody to get inside, touch some of the power lines at this sure. time. As cleanup gets underway, owners of the event space are tarping up the roof in hopes the lucky couple can still exchange vows here come Saturday. How's that bride feeling right now? Um, she's a little concerned, but we are just trying to be very positive. We want to try to make this bride's day perfect. <clears throat> A building inspector was called out to that event space next door just to make sure it's still structurally sound. By the way, emergency crews here went door to door earlier this evening. They say they don't have any reports of any other major damage to other buildings in the area or any reports of injuries. Live in Jefferson County, Brent Solomon, five on your side. Right now in downtown St. Louis, it is the calm after the storm, although the cloud cover remains. And some rain. Weather first chief meteorologist Scott Connell has been here all day tracking the storms. He joins us now with how those storms develop. Scott. You know, we were watching these storms. We knew they were going to form late this morning into the early afternoon to our west and northwest. That's exactly what happened. What did trip us up, though, a little bit, we had those winds that stayed backed a little bit in St. Louis, more out of the southeast than out of the south. And that's what led to a lot more spin ups instead of just the generic wind damage thunderstorms. Bottom line is it's still wind damage. Some of it probably caused by some twisting winds. We will find out tomorrow when National Weather Service crews start sending out some survey teams and what an awesome job they did today as well, getting everybody prepped up and ahead of this and dealing with the warnings this evening. We still have some rumbles of thunder in the area and there's even some downpours Metro East down to the south of St. Louis. But but this is the end of it, and none of this is severe. All the severe weather, that was early on with the first wave that went through. What we're looking at down to the south, you might have seen the crawl on the bottom of your screen just a few minutes ago. There was some rotation in far southern portions of Perry County, but we don't have viewers down in far southern portions of Perry County, so it sometimes shows up on the crawl, but that's why you don't see us on TV. You will see us if you're watching and it's a threat and you're in our viewing area. So in the meantime, that line is gone. The initial line's all the way over, approaching Louisville right now down to Paducah. That's where the severe weather was the front coming in and with that front we're seeing the winds turn more to the north and to the north northwest. That means the cooler air is in and on the way. We have seen temperatures drop way off this evening. Bottom line, 
severe threat is over for the rest of the night. Yes, you may hear some rumbles of thunder east and southeast of St. Louis. You need not worry about that. You can sleep comfortably tonight. Any showers will be over by two o'clock and it will stay much cooler, not only for tomorrow morning, but right into the weekend. We'll track that weekend forecast and take a look at some interesting pictures from some of our viewers in a few minutes, Mike. And this storm reached all the way to the Metro East in Cahokia Heights. Residents are still without power and dealing with a lot of downed trees. Laura Barcheski is live at the Cahokia Heights Fire Department, who's been responding to a lot of these calls, Laura. Mike and Kelly, they've re responded to roughly 20 calls here in Cahokia Heights so far, and they expect there's going to be more as people start to uncover more damage. There's two main things they're really dealing with here. That's down trees and lots of power outages. In the Metro East as a whole, there are roughly 2,000 homes without power. Some of the trees went all the way through the homes here, tearing open the roofs. Others didn't do as much damage, but took some power lines with them. And firefighters even had to respond to reports of those lines sparking near some down trees. A lineman for Ameren, Illinois says about half of the Park Lane Manor's neighborhood in Cahokia Heights right off the storm lost power during the storm and that's right off 157. There's a few poles down. I'd say it's going to take a few hours to get everybody in and working on these lines. Uh, there's quite a bit of damage, but then again, half the neighborhood is still on, so that's a plus. Uh, right now we're just trying to work our best and uh, keep at it. Now the Cahokia Heights Fire Department says they want people to watch out for those power lines and make sure you don't step on any debris as you kind of go through this and call them if you need any help during any of this storm or the cleanup as we know that's coming tomorrow. Reporting live in Cahokia Heights, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. We are also tracking storm damage in South St. Louis County. Robert Townsend continues our team coverage. He's live tonight near I-55 and South Lindbergh. Robert. Mike and Kelly, right now, lots of people in this South County area are also still without power tonight. For the past few hours, the traffic light at this busy intersection near South Lindbergh and St. John Church Road was out as a result of the afternoon storm. But about 40 minutes ago, the electricity was restored and now it's working again. At the height of the five o'clock rush hour traffic, a strong spring storm left its mark on this South St. Louis County area in a big way. It pushed this electrical pole onto a fence, damaged several others, and left them leaning near I-55 and the South Lindbergh exit. The trail of damage happened near these closed office buildings. We also saw lots of fallen tree limbs scattered across the grounds. And just a feet away from the zapped power lines, look at this huge tree that was uprooted when the storm blew through. And right now, more than 3,000 customers here in South County are still in the dark. An Ameren spokesperson says not to worry. Their crews are working hard to get the power back on. We're live in South County. Robert Townsend, 5 on your side. And as usual, you, our viewers, were a big part of our live storm coverage earlier tonight. Certainly were. You sent us your photos and videos of the storms to help keep your neighbors safe. Cammie Kime sent us this photo from Hillsboro, Missouri. It shows an impressive storm cloud. And then here's another impressive picture of the massive storm cloud. This photo is from Catherine Wadler from St. Paul, Missouri. That's in northwest St. Charles County. Now a photo from a dark and ominous cloud from over Lake Timberline in Bon Terre. Thank you, Evan Skiles, for this picture. And hail fell in Rolla. This photo from Helen Johnson shows pellets accumulating in her yard. And after the hail, there was a rainbow. The storm then moved its way to the Metro East. David from Maryville, Illinois, sent us this video of the tornado sirens going off. And then he sent us a photo of his rain gauge, which shows nearly two and a half inches of rain fell at his house. We'd love to see your pictures and photos. Just text them to 314-425-5355. But remember to be safe. He caused a horrific crash that cost a Tennessee teen her legs. He has shown no remorse, no empathy. Now Daniel Riley is headed to prison. I was happy with him. He was going to go to jail for what he did. Tonight, Janae Edmondson and her parents talk about finding closure and moving forward. Melee at McDonald's. Tonight, the charge one man faces in the brutal attack of a 15-year-old worker.
The storms are on the way out and much cooler air is surging in. Why you'll need to make a seasonal adjustment in your weekend wardrobe. 18 years and nine months. That's how long the man who caused the crash that caused Tennessee teenager Janae Edmondson to lose her legs will spend in prison. Today, a judge handed down the maximum sentence to Daniel Riley. It is actually two more years than he would have served had he taken a plea deal in the case. Christine Byers was in the courtroom and has new reaction from his victim. Janae Edmondson was 17 years old and in town for a volleyball tournament in February of 2023 when Daniel Riley blew through a yield sign, slammed into another car and into Janae severing her legs. Today, her mother read an impact statement to the judge. She still has so much more to endure in her life as we do. She will face it head on because that's who she is. She also had some words for Riley. He has shown no remorse, no empathy because he don't have it in him. It's not in his soul. Compassion comes from being held accountable to higher standards. He's never been held accountable before for anything in his life. Riley said nothing and showed no emotion when Judge Michael Noble sentenced him to the maximum amount of time the jury recommended. The jury found that this was not an accident. Mr. Riley, you were responsible for your choices from the moment you walked out of your home into that rental car. You chose not to have a valid driver's license for five years. You chose to violate the conditions of your house arrest. Those choices have consequence. At one point, Riley's attorney, Daniel Deemer, asked the judge to note for the record how Janae was wearing pants and prosthetics. In his appeal, Deemer argues that Janae leaving her legs exposed at trial was prejudicial to the jury. Janae tells us she was fitted for new prosthetics since the trial. I did get a new socket. That's a suction socket, so it's just way more comfortable and more convenient. She also talked about her reaction to the judge's decision. I was happy with it. Either way, if it was consecutive or concurrent, I mean, he was going to go to jail for what he did. So, I mean, I was happy with either one. So was her father, James Edmondson. It was a uh, closure for us uh, that um, the judge uh, um, looked at all of the facts of the, the uh, jury of his peers, gave him... Uh, that uh, sentencing of close to 19 years. And? She's walking. She's walking, so that's a good thing. The Edmondson civil case against the city of St. Louis is still pending. They allege the city failed to properly maintain the safety of the intersection where Janae was struck. This week, the city denied that allegation and requested the case go to a jury trial. A St. Louis man will spend the rest of his life in prison for what prosecutors are calling a thrill kill. Today, a jury found Lydra Craig guilty of first-degree murder for the 2021 shooting death of Don Yorker. Prosecutors say he asked Yorker for directions outside his South City home before shooting him in his face. A trial last year ended with a hung jury. Yorker's widow, Teresa, released a statement to Five on Your Side saying, quote, I can now have some comfort knowing that this criminal is off the streets for good so we cannot kill any other innocent people. Tonight, one man is dead. Two women are in critical condition after an overnight shooting in the Del Mar Loop. They were shot outside Pinup Bowl. Police still haven't released information about a suspect or what led to this shooting. Tonight, a man is behind bars on assault charges for the brutal attack against a 15-year-old employee at a North County McDonald's. Investigators say video shows 25-year-old Johnny Ricks grabbing the teen by her hair and stomping on her head in the parking lot. Ricks had just been kicked out of the restaurant on Parker Road. We have learned Aria Lynch is recovering from surgery for a broken nose. Tonight, an investigation into an incident at Washington University that some are calling racially motivated is complete. University officials say the incident last month was distasteful and disruptive. However, they cannot conclusively determine if students use racial slurs or threw eggs at dining room workers. One fraternity has been suspended. Another has been put on probation. A follow up tonight from the five on your side. I team the Missouri House has given initial approval to a proposed bill that would protect Bayer from cancer lawsuits. It has to do with the company's popular weed killer roundup. Bayer, with a hub in St. Louis, has been advocating lawmakers in three states for legal protection, including here in Missouri. Bayer says the proposed legislation is vital to protecting the agriculture industry. Consumer advocates warn against the company against giving the company immunity. The legislation needs one more vote in the House before moving 
to the Senate. Tonight, the FBI is on alert for any potential threats against the Jewish community ahead of Passover. The Jewish holiday begins Monday night. FBI Director Christopher Wray says anti-Jewish hate crime investigations have tripled since October 7th when Hamas attacked Israel. Federal agents are focusing on lone actors who could target large gatherings and religious locations. New tonight, St. Charles County residents are getting a better idea of how the massive I-70 project is going to unfold over the next few years. The Interstate 70 project director says what was going to be several separate projects has now been looped into the largest single project MoDOT has ever done. A third lane will be added to both east and westbound 70 from Wentzville to Warrington. This project will also include improvements to the 7064 and 61 interchange. A third lane is also being added on I-64 from Highway 70 to Highway K in O'Fallon. We look to award a contract in, in November of this year at the MoDOT Commission meeting, and we really expect work to begin this time next year. MoDOT expects this roughly $600 million project to take about four years. Chief Meteorologist Scott Cano rejoined us now with that weather first forecast. And I guess the good news, Scott, is these storms are now behind us. Yeah, they are behind us. And it was pretty interesting this afternoon watching how this line evolved. And our weather watchers certainly pay, uh, playing a very important role in us being able to see what was going on. Tracy shared this picture from up in Greenfield, Illinois. That's up in Greene County. That was one of the first tornado warnings that we had. And this storm, and I'm not sure how close she was to Greenfield. I know that's the general area, but it was north of that that we actually had a confirmed touchdown. And that very well could be a tornado on the ground. We just can't tell. But boy, you see something like that. And if you're close to it, you would want to be in your basement. That was the storm that was producing that. In fact, this is the last six hours of what it's been moving through the bi-state region, steadily moving through. That was the storm that continued to spin as it went across McCoupin County into Montgomery County. More showers and even some rumbles of thunder this evening with more downpours even into the metro. This is the one that went through with all the wind damage here. It was that leading first edge that had wind gusts, had some hail in there. And then because the winds were out of the southeast near the surface versus spinning a little more out of the west up aloft. We saw quite a few sp spinnies on this thing. A lot of tight rotation at the very leading edge, which means some of this wind damage is going to be attributable to small tornadoes. And we'll get more information about that going into tomorrow. Last hour or so, the vast majority of that rainfall has now shifted east and south of 255 and 270. You still have some that's a little heavier over towards Florida, Mount Vernon. We've even seen some warnings within the last couple of hours down here, southern Perry County, down towards Cape Girardeau. But even though that storm was spinning, not really the right environment and not enough to cause a panic or problems down that way. So here's what we have for you this evening. The cooler, drier air is coming in behind this front. The back edge of the cloud cover is still to our north and west. It's going to take a little longer to get out of here, but get out of here it will. And tomorrow morning we should wake up to mainly sunny skies. It's going to be brisk. Temperatures are down into the 40s early tomorrow morning, and during the day we only climb back into the lower 60s, maybe mid 60s. Over the weekend, a mix of sun and clouds. It's like a seasonal, a seasonal adjustment here. We're kind of spinning back to springtime weather instead of these summertime highs in the 80s. So the next couple of days we'll stay in the 60s. Right now, Lambert's coming in with our coolest temperature that we've seen so far today at 55. 82 was our high. 99 hundredths of an inch of rain in the rain gauge officially at the airport. Just couldn't get that last hundredth of an inch. But boy, Mother Nature sure tried today, didn't she? All right, so low 60s the next few days. Things are really settling down here. Yes, it's a cooler breeze. Yes, some clouds in and out the next couple of days at times. And then we'll roll in the chance for some showers, maybe some thunderstorms for Tuesday, and then again towards the end of next week. But at this point, way too soon to say that any of those days have a severe weather threat. All right, Scott, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sports is next with Frank. Mizzou's plan for their football stadium is flashier than Mike Bush's Lamborghini. The Blues had their exit interviews and the Billikens have rehired a very popular basketball coach. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942.
The Blues are playoffless in back-to-back -back years for the first time since 2011. I don't think fans really care that they were in contention to the end. It's a pass-fail business, and the Blues failed to make the playoffs. Today they did their exit interviews. Corey Miller has the story. Thomas, stopped by Ottinger. The Blues season comes to an end. For the second year in a row, the only view the Blues will have of the playoffs is on television. It, uh, it hurts a little this year for sure. Um, you know, I, you just figure hopefully last year's a one-off, but um, yeah, it's, it's why we play, right? And that's uh, to just be a competitor and, you know, you, you don't play this game forever, so you want to be in that action. Despite having five players with 25 goals or more, one of the most dominant goaltending tandems in hockey, and an improved defense, they were five points shy of the postseason. And you can point to their performance against some of the league's worst teams, as one reason. We played with the top teams. We beat the top teams all year long. And I think just uh, when we played guys or teams below us in the standings, we were able to find uh, the points or win the hockey games. And ultimately, um, that bit us in the butt. Now as the offseason arrives, the biggest question revolves around the head coach. Drew Bannister is on the short list to return, but Doug Armstrong is still assessing his options. As I watched him perform and I watched our team perform, I started to cross names off that list. And now Drew is one of a very small number of people I want to talk to about moving forward. I thought he did a very good job. And the overall course stays the same. Blues want to stay competitive while still building for the future. Some of our players, veteran players, to play a little bit better. Some of our younger players to grow a little bit. The coach has to get a little better. The manager has to get a little bit better. But we're not going to reinvent the wheel. There, there is a plan in place, and, and I'm willing to stick through that plan. Reporting from Maryland Heights, Corey Miller, 5 on your side sports. The Cardinals are back home tomorrow against the first place Brewers. Victor Scott is hoping to find his groove at the plate. The 23 year old is hitting 089, but he has hit at every stage of his career. A fellow speedster and former Cardinal told me he'd like to help. I wish that I was there to help him. He does not have a plan. I can offer him so much help. He's going to be another product of a kid like Billy Hamilton. All speed, but could not hit to get on base to showcase his speed. This Five on Your Side St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. The rivalry can't get any better. City SC versus Sporting KC. About four hours apart, the KC people think they're pretty cool, but no one denied that our soccer heritage is much better. And now the two teams are separated by just one point in the standings. Although City SC had the better regular season last year, Sporting KC ended City season last year in the postseason. Yeah, that was last year. You know, I th we can, you know, we can talk about it. We can rehash it, revisit it. Um, we're in the current moment right now and focusing on the very current next moment, which is a game against Sporting KC. So, you know, we've had, yeah, a really <coughs> good training week. Um, we've progressed. Plans for a $250 million facelift of the north end zone at Faroe Field were unanimously approved by the Missouri Board of Curators. The iconic Rock M will stay with a dressed up area around it for general admission seating. Luxury suites and club seating underneath the Rock M are also planned. Completion is expected in time for the 2026 football season. It's real and spectacular. Corey Tate's pretty good too. Josh Schertz announced that the former Pattonville star will be on his new staff at St. Louis University. Tate has been with the Billikens since 2016 and has been responsible for recruiting some of the best talent in Billiken history like Jordan Goodwin and Yori Collins. Coach Tate is regarded as a great relationship builder. And I got to tell you, before every game, the other coaches are yelling and getting all the players fired up. And you know what Corey does? He hugs each player. Go out and have some fun. Really? Yeah, he's really cool. That's Can I just nice. ask you how worried you are about, I mean, everybody talked about the pitching going into this year for the Cardinals. How worried are you about the offense? Because it's one of the worst so far in the league. Yeah. The only thing is, it is early, but no production in right field, no production in center field, no production at second base. And I mean, look, they have three home runs total in their outfield. So, yeah. They're struggling. So you are concerned. So very. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Frank, thanks. We'll be right back.
Still don't have plans yet for the weekend? Today in St. Louis has you covered. We'll show you where you can enjoy a local listening party to Taylor Swift's new album, bring the kids out to a fun carnival filled with games and rides, and even celebrate spring while enjoying lots of food, dancing, and other performances from the Seeks of Missouri. That's all happening Friday morning on Today in St. Louis. Okay, a lot was happening this evening. Let's get a final check it's of the very forecast. very busy, hasn't yes, it? Yes, yes, it's died down. Things have settled down. We still have a few showers south and east of St. Louis. They're gone. Tomorrow's a whole different story. A lot cooler in the 40s out the door tomorrow morning. Temperatures only in the lower 60s tomorrow afternoon. And heading into the weekend, looks pretty quiet. A few clouds around on Saturday from time to time. Low 60s. Might even see a few 30s for overnight lows here by Sunday morning. And again on Monday morning. Not expecting frost, though, and next week it'll get more spring-like once again. And there you have it, 5 on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. And start your day with Today in St. Louis at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.